Hello Cosplay World, welcome to my rant on Monday. I don't know if I put a name for them or what. Um, but I got some more questions from folks and I'm going to answer them and we are going to go over some more foam. We're also going to go over a couple other, one other thing I guess, but I guess I'm covering foam the first two weeks because that's what I got questions about. Okay, um, question is how do I like protect or reinforce foam? Uh, and make it really super durable. Now here we have the same foam from the first video I made about my rants. And on this side we have um, gesso and on this side we have plaster of Paris and in the corner this is where they meet. And this side is the control, it's just plain foam. Okay, and what we're gonna do is um, I'm going to put several uh, coatings as well as glues on on this, so uh, so that you can see that uh, how they affect each how they affect the foam. Okay. So first off, it's pretty obvious what's going to happen here. I'm just going to put some super glue right here in the corner. Some of this stuff may take a few seconds um, to to take effect. So that I'm going to uh, talk about something else as soon as we've got these applied. So in the corners is the uh, glue, the, the, um, the super glue. So um, that one should be extremely acidic um, as well as this spray paint which I'm going to shake because it's kind of old. It's also really cheap so chances are it's going to um, not be the greatest. Alright so I'm going to hit this here there we go, and you can already see it, it's just eating the mess out of it. Okay, this is on the plaster of Paris. Careful not to hit, hit the super glue. Okay. There we go, and in the last corner. There we are. Okay. So, we'll leave that as is. Let's see, the next one is, this is my master's glue, my kind of all-purpose glue for removing wood, the plastic, or anything that's pretty much not foam. Now, this may not be super evident right away. Oh yeah, look at that. It's already eaten right through it. If you had any kind of detail work there, it would have been completely ruined. Ah. Okay. Uh, ah. This glue is very rubbery. I don't know. Okay, come on. I think it's just because it's old. I'm gonna get it to stick. I'm gonna get it to stick. It doesn't even want to stick. It just keeps coming off on the plaster of Paris. Um, there's it, the plaster of Paris keeps getting um, on the surface and just pulling away from the glue, um, which is one of the things that happens with when you do plaster of Paris work. Even when I'm painting, I can um, if I'm trying to stick some pieces of foam together. Um, plaster of Paris doesn't stick super well to. Um, to uh, to foam, so you can pull up spots. Let's see if I can manage to get this on here. Yep. All right, get it. I got some on the the gesso. Come on, come on. Come on. This is really stringy. I'm gonna take up half my video just putting this through the glue on. All right. There we go. No. No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it to the side of the foam and wrap it around. Okay. Alright, this master glue apparently refuses to adhere to, uh, it, it doesn't, it just, what it does is the plastic pairs comes up and it doesn't stick to it in the least. It, it'll stick, you see it's on the side here, but it won't stick to the plaster of Paris itself. It'll stick to gesso, um, and you can already see here in the corner, this one that's unexposed, there's a little bite out of it already. Um, now, what's going on with the super glue is that's kind of hard to see because it's only, it's very small, it's clear, and oh, don't be that perfect. Oh, God, glue! Okay, there we go. Is that it is in fact eating it, 
and there's lots of bubbles making kind of bigger bubbles here um, here it's it is getting through a little bit a little bit it's making smaller bubbles here not really anything and here not really anything oh and the spray paint is no it's not doing anything here spray paint is okay it, you can kind of see maybe it's getting it through a little oh wow it got right through the gesso so the spray paint got right through the gesso uh, no problem but with the gesso and the this one is obviously the best this um, with the plastic paris and the gesso it is protecting from the spray paint let me just double check it looks like it is uh, I think it's mostly the work of the um, plaster pair so the gesso is that's been eaten so some that's why I use both of these materials because sometimes they, they like um, they, they some are more protective against different chemicals and are, yeah okay so this is the uh, 3M78. I'm pretty sure nothing's gonna happen here. It's just right in the middle. I mean, it's made for a phone, so whatever. Okay, so we had um, we had spray paint. Now here's acrylic paint. Um, now nothing's really. I don't. I don't. If something happens, I am going to be flabbergasted here. It's. I seriously doubt anything's gonna happen with this. It's um, acrylic paint is pretty safe. My hands are going to get completely dirty here. <gasps> oh no! Okay, well. Um, let's see, here we have some um, body filler. Um, there we go. And we have the, um, the chemical at ac the activator. Um, and I'm just going to put the activator on because even if I mix them together, it would be one of the other that would do the damage. So, um, let's just make sure. We get a stick. This is an old broken off uh, paintbrush handle. Come on, come on. Come on down. There we go. I imagine, um, I'm gonna, I'm willing to bet that this one will still eat it, but it won't be so harsh. Alright, so we're just gonna spread that out a little bit. Over there. I'm glad these are all kind of like different colors, otherwise it might be hard to tell what's going on exactly. And we want a kind of, actually I should thin these out, because if they're too thick, the, it, the effects of the, of the foam being destroyed will be less evident. Huh? Oh, cats are just making noises. Um, I should uh, let you guys know uh, the reason why you're hearing quite a lot of background noise is I have the window open. Um, this is a lot of different chemicals to just be open. Um, and as soon as this video goes off, I'm going to turn the fan on. I can't really run the fan while I'm doing this because you would not be able to hear me very clearly. Um, if at all. So I'm just going to close that back up. Alright, so next is the resin. Aha, all-purpose fiberglass resin. Alright, so I'm just putting these on for right now. I'll talk about each one um, and their strengths and weaknesses as far as uh, the form and materials go. Um, this is just the pure resin. Fiberglass itself is just kind of um, a fabric. Yeah, just kind of a fabric. Yes, the window is open and the casts are making noise. Sorry guys. Alright, so I'm just going to put this here. There we go. I'm going to have to wash my hands. Um, right. There are other protective coatings, and I'll go into those as well. But these are the two I use most commonly and for and that, yeah, out of trial and error, just they seem to work the best for me. Um, let's see, I'll put this on this edge here. And it's kind of a dirty grayish brown clear thing, so still a, a noticeable.
will know for the for the fiberglass resin, um, it disappeared. But I assure you, it's more, much more damaging than the the the, the body of the material. Okay, so here we have part A and part B of uh, just this clear class resin. This is for making resin molds. Um, let me see if I can find a clean piece piece of plastic. And I'm going to use the hardener or the resin. Uh, the hardeners usually are much worse. They're more chemically not friendly. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm going to put these near the center. Yeah, put these near the center here. There, it's clear. Maybe I should have used the hardener because I can see it a little easier. Okay. Should be able to tell what's going on. Okay. Well, so really, was kind of surprised by that gesso. I was expecting the gesso to hold back the spray paint a little better. At least our thin coats; these are not like particularly even uniform. That's because. If you're doing a job, you you may not have a consistent, it may not be perfect everywhere. So these inconsistent areas will pop up and um, they'll be where the damage is the worst. So kind of a worst case scenario here. All right, next is, I think this is the last thing. This is, well, okay, this is white glue. And we're just gonna put the white glue here and here. And here it's kind of I don't yeah, I don't really expect this white glue to do a whole lot. Um okay, we'll spread it out. Okay, there we are. Okay. Um unfortunately for this next part I need clean hands, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut away, I'll be right back. Okay, well I'm back and my hands are relatively clean, I guess. Um, so what we have here, this is just the gesso I used over here in the in Lasso Paris, the same old stuff you've seen a hundred times in my videos. Alright, so, um, I have a last minute delivery, this is going to be, um, I don't know, a few days before the convention that he wanted to use it in, so this is a prop that was ordered. And here we have this kind of wire that's hanging down here, this is also sort of a sneak peek, I'll have it use of it. Up there up of this soon. So how this works is we have a lead leading to the bottom here and then it, it, you just need to touch the top of the battery to uh, a copper plate on the inside here and we just it just lights up. Let's see if I can get it to show in the camera. There we go. Alright, does that show up pretty good? That's all you gotta do is you gotta press it and then you um, you put the other half of the staff on. So when you get this, uh, that's how you do it. You just need to get these wires kind of out of the way so that the whole piece will connect together. Um, and that's why I say twist it so that it will. All the wires are nice and tight around the battery pack. Oh well, um, that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. Come on. Oh well, that's all. Okay, so. This, uh, uh, that's just for that one person who ordered this, you just kind of touched up to the back end. You know, hold it um, right now, the other end is in this box, uh, and this is, uh, the box will come in. I'll have tape around this edge right here. You, you untape it from this end. Usually, this is actually pretty common for when I deliver props, is I, I do these, these kind of, uh, double half, these double boxes. But this is just two boxes I, uh, together for this long tube that it can come apart. Rah! Rah! Does it come apart? No! It, it, okay, well, it comes apart here. Assuming that I can actually not wrestle with it on camera. Okay, there we go. I don't. I can't really get up and open it right. But, there you go. Pretty simple. You pull the two halves apart, and then um, there's your prop. It comes out. Um, shipping Shipping guys, um, shipping is almost always about $10 per cubic foot. 
um, and that's always rounded up. So you're always rounding up on these things. So this is, I don't know, um, they're probably going to say 10 inches wide here. Yeah, they're probably going to say 10 inches wide because they always measure bigger. Um, I don't want it to break the foot marker. Once it hits, once it ma manages to get to one foot or even 11 inches, sometimes um, they will charge me more. So I want to keep it within the foot parameters. So it's also about, oh, it's about, let's say 30, 33. They might say 34 at the most, but I don't want to hit to hit the 36 mark. That's that's when I'll start charging me for four feet. So this is about three cubic feet, and it usually runs about ten dollars in North America. In North America, it's usually about ten dollars to ship the, the boxes size, guys. Um, so it's about thirty bucks. Um, pretty straightforward. It's still working me less. We'll see what happens. It's all about what happens. You never know with props because. Um, Sometimes I just can't measure it to the right dimension and what I can manage to fit inside a box or I can't fit inside a box. I do try and get as small as I can, but there we go. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put this in there with some um, some of this packing foam left over from when I moved and then that's gonna be it. Okay, now back to this. Now I think all this has had a chance. It's at least had a chance to eat away at this foam. And here we have it. Um, yes. Now you can clearly see the super glue has eaten this away. The um, the fiberglass has eaten it away here. The white glue, not really. The body filler is eaten away a little bit. Of course, the spray paint ate away. The the glue ate it away. Um, in the middle is the um, the activator didn't eat it away though. I guess for the for the uh, body filler. Um, the, of course, the insulation today did not. Um, this is fine. It's, I think it's Plaster Paris. Plaster Paris is, is keeping it out. Um, the, let's see, um, it's the glue, yeah, the glue, the master's glue is eating through the, is slowly eating through the, um, jet, the um, gesso, but, the, what is it, um, what is this, uh, oh, I have to find the tin that it's in, um, let's see, the body filler, yeah, the body filler is not eating away here, it's not eating away in any of these, it's protected, so only bare foam will the body filler, um, eat away at it, uh, it's the, also the, Fiberglass resin is being protected more more by the plaster Paris than the um, than just a plain gesso. It seems to be slowly seeping through the gesso, but when they're both together, they they they're fine. This is fine. The super glue here in the corner didn't hurt. It didn't get through the plaster and the gesso. So awesome. Um. And of course, the acrylic paint really didn't do anything. Um, the resin is—it's actually—it's eating through a bit of this this foam very slowly, but it's eating through it. It's eating through it like as slow as the this. Um, the plaster of Paris is not doing anything to protect the foam really. It's the gesso that's protecting it. Um, the gesso side is fine. I have it right on the edge, so I can see on this piece here. This part's being eaten, but this part's not being eaten. All right. So, um, just plain gesso and um, plaster Paris. It's not the strongest material to to uh, to protect it, and that's why I'm going into this, not just a demonstration of what can and can eat through it. And this isn't all of it. I could I could go into like 20 billion different varieties of it, but these are kind of general general. Um, things to try and combine with foam. So what I would suggest is just to cover your bases um, because sometimes it just will protect it, sometimes the plaster paris will protect it. So um, I guess both would be great just to have. Um, what is it? Uh, I think 
fiberglass is pretty strong. That's if you combine fiberglass with with this method of coating and 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 um, and what is it? Uh, protecting. You'll get a stronger, a, a more, a much more rigid shell. Um, you'll have to definitely work to finish the final project if you're using the fiberglass mesh to uh, to protect it uh, to make it s so it's um, make it so it it doesn't um, uh, I lost my train of thought Ugh. sorry fumes fumes okay I'm gonna have to like I'm gonna have to concentrate yeah so fiberglass will give it a, a more rigid protection um, I can definitely feel it anyway but you have to finish it it'll take a lot more work okay the body filler um, it takes it takes less work than the fiberglass with the mesh because the mesh will make the fiberglass not look so good you can just add the fiberglass sorry the resin this is just resin actually um, you can just have this resin over it and then watch it and coat make sure the coat stays even that's possible too, but it's very brittle. It, it can, it's not nearly as strong as when you have the mesh. Um, one other thing that you've seen me do a few times is uh, the Wonderflex. Now this is something I would only recommend for small pieces. Um, for bigger pieces, it's extremely expensive because, I mean, I can, I can, for this square footage, this plastic behind me, this, this, you know, is two, three times less expensive. You can get two, three times more, maybe four if you're savvy, um, four times as much square footage of Wonderflex uh, for your dollar. Sorry, of plastic. Wonderflex is more co is the most costly sheet material I buy as a cosplayer. Or as, yeah. So, you want to, it's really easy to use, no problem. It sticks, it's, it'll stick fairly well, not really well, to foam. Um, let me show you a couple of these because they, they stick differently to different um, materials. One second. Um, you want to keep the heat gun away from the uh, foam. You'll, I'll show you what, what that does at the end of this because I'm pretty sure you'll, you, can, you can tell what's going to happen when I hit, hit this foam with the heat gun. Alright, so there we go. Oh wait, that's still on. That's okay. I'm gonna put it on the uh the plastic pairs. Now plastic yeah, here we go. See? Alright. It's not really sticking to the plaster pairs too well actually. Yeah. No, nope, not, not particularly well. Um the the plaster pairs does a pretty good job of repelling things that would try and stick to it. Oh well. So there's one kind of advantage if you're looking to use plaster pairs is that it will repel those kind of sticky based materials. Um, now it will stick no problem to the gesso. There we go. Alright. There we go. So, so Waterflex will stick to the gesso, stick to the plain foam. Not really to the... See what it is? You can see it's pulling up the plaster Paris rather than sticking to it or it's not yeah so it's not really a good thing to mount yeah you want to mount directly to the foam if you're joining pieces with Wonderflex I do this sometimes but with the plaster Paris over it just kind of comes up off of it now somewhere around here I have a glue stick here is a glue stick now I've seen people talk about using glue stick to the foam um, you can do this. It's not an easy thing to do. I do not recommend the glue gun um, because it comes out of there blazingly hot and you get kind of less control as in terms of direct heat. You get more control as far as stream and the volume of glue. Yeah. So with this you can't really control the volume so much because you, you get whatever is hot. But with the, the glue gun you do get whatever you lay down. Uh, you, whatever you squeeze out, because you have a trigger. With this, you just kind of have the end of the stick. But with the heat gun, you can kind of control the heat. Um, I can't. The trick here is, I can tell how 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 
soft it is by what its transparency. Um, here we go. There it is. All right. So you can. Oops, that was white glue. All right. Well, at least it was white glue, not resin. All right. Here we have the the hot glue, and it's on the foam. And it did bubble up a tiny bit, but it'll stick there. It'll also stick to the gesso, but here it is again. You see me running along here? Um, it'll repel it. it, it you, uh, as soon as it solidifies, I'm going to pull it up, and you'll see that it sticks. It, it pulls up pretty easy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up, and I'm going to kind of purposely melt the foam. Again, I have the window open, and um, I don't recommend you sit in a room full of fumes because... You will lose brain cells, and I'm I'm not really looking forward to losing any brain cells myself. Whew. Oh well. So maybe this is just my fine touch that I've had, you know, experience with this. But you can you can melt into the foam, and or you. And you saw last time I kind of sat there and looked at it for a bit before um, I I put it down. Uh, this time I just kind of put it right down once it was ready. Um, and the, if I get up close, maybe you can see the huge bubbles here, whereas this one doesn't have that so, doesn't have that so much. Oh well. Okay, I'm gonna pull this up, and that just comes right on off. You see the it it sticks to the plaster of Paris, but then it leaves these spots here that pull right on off. And here we go. There we go. See, sticks pretty good. Uh, the gesso has much more adherence to the foam itself than Plastic Paris, not really. Uh, like I said, Plastic Paris is mainly for filling the holes. So if you don't have the entire surface covered, that's not so bad. You can you can, um, you can can use those spaces where it's particularly thin to kind of uh, have it stick a little better. Oh well, um, I think I covered a lot today. I don't know how long this video is, but um, I hope you found it informative. I hope you find these examples uh, useful so that you don't have to do this yourself. You don't have to buy, like, this is probably uh, maybe in the equipment, this is a 50 dot 25 yeah, I spent quite a, this is a lot of money that you don't have to spend yourself. You just watch the video and then you, got, you, you get a good idea of what it can do. Um, I don't know, is there any other kind of glues or anything that I haven't covered yet? <sighs> oh well, um, I would suggest friendly plastic. It, you, it has a much higher melting temperature than um, uh, Wonderflex. It melts at a higher temperature. So, it'll, it, it'll burn like it does, like it did with this foam bit. And you know what, um, I'm going to pull this bit off if I can. No, it's not solidified yet. Um, as for hardness, maybe I'll do a hardness test in the future where I have actual swatches of bigger pieces, but that's that's too long of a ramp for one go. Um, oh well, all right, this sticks pretty good. But yeah, it did it did it did eat a couple hole, some holes in it. Oh well. Um, remember, uh, I do have. A warning about Wonderflex, it will become soft and weak in the heat, don't leave it in your car, and on a summer day you'll pretty much lose whatever you had. Same thing with uh, hot glue. You can you can it'll weak it's not really good for leaving out in the sun, it'll weaken and you could have whatever you're made fall apart. Oh well, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Hope you liked uh, just a little bit of information about shipping here in North America. I don't ship I extremely I don't really ship out of North America because once you leave ship well once you ship over shores it gets to be like five hundred dollars basically for most most of my props. So only twice have I ever actually shipped overseas. To some really fanatical people. <laughs> oh well. Uh, I think that's it. I'm gonna let you go. Thanks for watching guys. Good times to all.